Good day or night to you, I'm Evan, and welcome to The Gaming Tome. In my last video, I crafted a large set of ocean tiles with beautiful Mod Podge water effects. Yes, actual good water effects, not that other I was doing. I'm very happy with how they turned out, but there was something missing. My ocean needed a way to transition from water to land. In this video, I will share how I made beach tiles for miniature gaming. The process of crafting these is similar to my ocean tiles, so I may gloss over some of the finer details. Check out my previous video for a more in-depth commentary relating to painting ocean terrain and creating the water effects. Now let's get crafting. The base material for the tiles will once again be 3mm thick paperboard. The ocean tiles were 9 inch squares, and these beach tiles are going to be compatible with those. Ultimately, the tiles will have uneven shapes to make the land side look more natural, but they will roughly conform to the following dimensions. Straight tiles will be 9 inches long and 4.5 inches wide. Acute corner tiles will be used to make the land curve around the water. They are shaped like a one quarter slice of a nine inch diameter pie. They can also be triangular. Obtuse beach corner tiles will be used to make the water curve around the land. They can either look like an irregular pentagon or have an L shape with sides of nine inches and four and a half inches. See, this is why you need to pay attention in geometry class, so you can craft miniature terrain. What other application of geometry could there be? After the basic shapes have been cut out, it is time to give the beach edge or edges a bevel. This will help blend the base into the gaming mat, felt, or terrain board you are using. A sharp utility knife makes this step very easy. Just make sure you wear some hand protection. Take note that a single 9 inch square can yield both types of beach corner tile. Water flows and spreads out if it is not contained, so it would look more realistic if the transition zone is slightly raised above the water effects. The next step is to build a subtle embankment. Roughly half of the width will be land and the rest will be submerged. I started by marking the intended boundary of the embankment. To simulate a sandy shore, I'm using this wood filler putty. This stuff has a thick consistency but can be softened with water. I placed a few blobs of wood filler along the embankment length and then got to work smoothing it out. Wetting your fingers with water greatly helps in smoothing this material. Try to make the embankment rise up and then taper back down as you get to the other edge. Wipe the edges of the paperboard clean before setting the tiles to dry. Inevitably, you will have a couple of spills. This can be easily cleaned up with a wet towel or sponge. I recommend keeping a dirty sponge with your craft supplies to clean up these sorts of messes. The cure time varies depending on thickness. I gave my tiles 24 hours to dry before proceeding. The tile edges may need a bit of sanding. Make sure you wear eye protection and a good mask if you do sand it. This wood filler has a very fine texture and sanding it creates dust that could be harmful to your eyes and lungs. Safety comes first. These shoreline waters should not be still. There needs to be waves. The Mod Podge water effects cannot create big waves, so I am reaching for a tried and true technique of creating ripples and waves using bathroom tissue. Spread some watered down PVA over the submerged half of the tile and lay strips of tissue over the glue. The water softens the paper and the glue will eventually seal it in place. Stipple the tissue and shape it into waves. Do not add too many ripples to the surface, but make sure you remove any patterns on the paper. When it is dry, make sure to trim off the excess. The tiles will not sit snugly against each other if the edges are not clean and clear. The painting process starts with the embankment. A coat of buttermilk colored paint will make this look like bright sand. Make sure to stretch this color out 
to the toilet paper wave textured area. The water will ideally have a gradient and the sand color will need to show through. Next comes the base color for the water. I'm using a cerulean blue for my water. This color should go along the water edges and reach part way up the shore, but not all the way. I made it cover two thirds of the distance. In hindsight, I would have preferred it to go halfway. The rest of this middle area is for blending. I'm using a teal paint to blend this tropical water to the shore. There are two ways to do this. The easiest and better looking way is to use an airbrush. Just spray until the boundary between the base blue and the sand is solid teal. Then let it fade away to the sand beneath in the shallows. Maybe add a camo pattern of teal splotches to the deep side too. The harder way is to thin the teal paint with water and carefully layer it to create the gradient. Brush on the watered down paint lightly in the shallows and heavier where the deeper water should be. Many thin layers will make the effect look better, but take longer. The final touch to painting the water is to highlight the crests of the waves. A simple dry brush or stippling of white on the largest waves will do the trick. Just make sure you do not overdo it. The highlight looks better if it is subtle. This next step is up to personal taste. I found the sand to be a bit too solid in color. A sepia wash will add some warmth and depth to the color scheme. A follow-up dry brushing of buttermilk paint on top of this furthers the effect while making the surface look a little dusty. That is all for painting, now it is off to the fun part, the water effects. The water effects will be created using gloss mod podge, just like the ocean tiles. The difference is that this time only part of the tile is getting the coats of mod podge. A thick stippling of this PVA based glue slash sealer slash finish will create an undulating pattern. Add two more layers to get the appropriate surface texture. I gave my tiles 24 hours between coats just to be safe. After the final coat, I set the beach tiles somewhere clean and safe for the Mod Podge to cure over four weeks. It is a long time, but worth it. Do not damage the tiles by using them before they are fully cured. There is one final step after the Mod Podge is cured and that is to give it a couple of coats of acrylic gloss varnish. This is to add an extra layer of protection to the Mod Podge as it is still somewhat malleable after being fully cured. I covered this in more detail in my Ocean Tiles video, but long story short, the Mod Podge is a little tacky and it can stick to things. And there we have it, a set of transitional pieces to merge water and land on the tabletop. These water effects are once again a beauty to behold. I like the end results of blending the water to the shallows. Both techniques for fading out the water coloration work, but the airbrush is the clear winner for the beach tiles. The gradient is much smoother, was easier to apply, and took much less time. I did not spend a whole lot of time on my hand brush gradients, so it is certainly possible to get better results than I did. It would take a lot of time though. These pieces add a lot of options to the ocean tile set. Firstly, they visually transition from water to land. You can have part of the tabletop be a large body of water and another part be land without there being a jarring edge in between. Secondly, the corner pieces open up tons of possibilities for the shape of the coastline. You can have shores that are not straight, you can have bays, you can lay out a peninsula. If you have four of each corner, then you can make islands and lakes. The beach tiles can even be put together to form rivers. Now that's pretty cool. These pieces have options in how they can be used and that is something I value greatly in miniature terrain. 
The beach tiles share the same durability and storage concerns of the ocean tiles. The Mod Podge is not rock hard when fully cured, so the pieces are susceptible to scratches and dents from things being placed on top of them. Heat softens the water effects, so keep them out of direct sunlight. Conversely, cold hardens the Mod Podge. Do not stack these vertically when storing them, as that will result in a flattening of the Mod Podge ripples. On the bright side, the toilet paper waves and ripples, along with the sandy embankment, reduce the points of contact between the Mod Podge and whatever's being put on top of the terrain piece. These water effects look amazing, but they are not perfect. Keep these caveats in mind if you are planning on crafting some of these for yourself. This completes the saga of my Mod Podge Ocean Tiles. I love this set, and I look forward to setting it up for a game. I do not know what I will play, but it will be glorious. Just look at that. Now that's some beautiful miniature terrain. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like. If you did not, then tell me why. If you want to see more content, then set up a chair on the beach, fetch yourself a tasty beverage, and just relax. But don't relax too hard. You have to be awake to press the subscribe button. Or do you? Thank you for watching, and until next time, keep making and keep playing. Have a good one.